I'll be there went to number one. The Jackson Five were born. When I talked with Brother Michael, as I will chronicle now, he said to me, Farrakhan, I didn't have a childhood. I would have liked to have sleepovers and pillow fights and all the things that children did. But I was performing since I was five years old. That's why Michael found so much joy with the young lady, Brooke Shields. And when he met with Shirley Temple Black, they both sat down and cried together because Shirley Temple Black was a childhood star that I remember when I was a little boy. And they, you know, when you're gifted like that, you don't have a childhood because somebody's pushing you and through pushing the gifted ones, the parents and others can become wealthy. I told Michael, I said, Michael, in the world of wisdom, we don't have time for foolishness. In the world of wisdom, you plan for your baby when you know you've conceived. And even before that, when you get down on your knees, mother, black, brown, red, yellow, or white, when you know you are expecting, then the, the person that wants to make a great child, they go down on their knees and they vow what is in their womb to God. Listen, as this new life is being formed in the womb, it has eyes, but it cannot see, but ears, it can hear. It hears his mother's heartbeat. It knows its mother's voice. It hears what goes on in the environment around it. So a pregnant woman is so precious. And you must never expose a pregnant woman to things that would damage that which is growing in her womb. Some people play voices to their child. Some play music to their child. And even though the Quran says, when the child is born into the world, it knows nothing, but it has an inclination coming from that womb. The woman is sacred. And it's so sad that we as men don't realize how sacred the womb of the female is. That you make the prophets. You make the kings, you make the rulers, you make the demons. They all come from your womb. Michael Jackson's mother was a praying mother. That young boy was born into the world for a purpose and with a destiny bigger than music.
We know him. My children knew him from the time he was 10 and came to public attention. My children grew up watching Michael Jackson and the Jackson Five. And when they had the, um, the little, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, child show. You know. What? Cartoon of the Michael Jackson and the Jacksons. My children would stay at the TV. They knew all his songs by heart. And we watched him grow. I wish they had the screen so I could show you his growth. At 10, he was black, with a black face, kinky hair, broad nose, thick lips. Somebody told Michael he was ugly. Somebody told my brother he wasn't good looking. Somebody told you the same thing. So you begin to hate the way God made you but you don't have no money to fix it. <laughs> so, as Brother Michael began to get a little money, he began to try and fix things. Well, I read something. He, uh, he had about six nose jobs. Uh, he had um, oh, a lot of stuff done. He had money. And he was working on himself. I had a conversation with brother. He said to me, he said, Minister, They always made us see black people as ugly people in the jungles of Africa. Listen to his words to me. He said, but then I began to study and I saw that some of these great Egyptian pharaohs, they were beautiful people. He said, and so I went, he said, to my friend Spielberg and David Geffen and others and I asked them would they help me to produce a movie on the lives of Africans to show black people how really beautiful we are and were. He said they turned him down and he said he decided he would do it himself. It was Hollywood whose first movie, what was the first movie? The Birth of a Nation. How did it portray us. And how has Hollywood portrayed us? And who were the Hollywood moguls that portrayed us like that? Am I anti-Semitic or are they anti black? They know our history. And they wanted to keep our history from us so that we would never be inspired to rise above what they had portrayed us as. I didn't write no book called Little Black Sambo. Somebody wrote it for me to read. 
I'm not anti-Semitic, but they were anti-black. As Michael grew, he began to change. He fixed his nose, he fixed his chin, he took some of the fat out of his jaws, and later on, you know, he contracted or contacted this skin disease called vitiligo. They say it first appeared on his hand, and that's why he started wearing the glove. But as you know, vitiligo, it takes away your pigment. And you'll have one part of you very light, almost like an albino, and the other part is natural. Michael being before the public, he didn't want to be spotted, so he went to dermatologist who sped up the process. So Michael went from black at 10 years old to white in his 40s. They say when he died his body was chalk white. He was bald from the burn in his hair so he wore a wig and they say that the pain that he suffered from that burn is what started him on the pain medication. 